Hello friends. Unlike my previous talks on MISC, the multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children related to COVID, in this particular talk, I would be talking when not to suspect MISC. Fever plus COVID antibody positivity is not MISC. And there are pertinent reasons why I present this talk today. The objectives of this brief video would be to highlight that not every febrile child with positive COVID antibody has MISC, the multisystem inflammatory syndrome, and when should you not think of MISC in the current scenario. Now, MISC, as we all know, has been there for the past two years once the pandemic started. This typically affects children two to six weeks after infection with SARS-CoV-2. It is an uncommon disease because as against 322 children who developed COVID infections, two of them went on to develop MISC. So typically less than 1% of children who have COVID infection would have MISC. And the initial definition said we needed antibody positivity or a PCR positivity or an exposure. What's the clinical presentation? This is very important to remember at today when we try to treat these children. Typically these children can come to us with high grade fever, <clears throat> rashes over the body, Conjunctival injection, as you can see in this picture, very high CRPs and a rising platelet count. This is what is typically the Kawasaki disease phenotype. is a very characteristic phenotype which we all know how to treat. The second presentation which emerged through this pandemic was of, the, of those adolescent children who came to us with high-grade fevers, rashes, conjunctival injection. Some of them had severe pain abdomen. Consistently, all of them had high CRP, lymphopenia. They presented to us with shock due to severe myocarditis. Now this is MISC that warrants urgent treatment. And then there were a few children who had fevers, high CRPs, but no organ dysfunction, and we call them the febrile inflammatory state. And they did not actually need any form of treatment. Now MISC typically affects older children. 50% of them usually present with shock. That means a lot of these children require PICU care. Myocarditis here is clinically manifest and we know the trigger is COVID-19 and the good part of this disease is that most children are responsive to steroids and intravenous immunoglobulin. However, we have a challenge. Now we are into the third wave caused by the Omicron variant. There is a concern for rise in cases with MISC because of rise in infections and this would typically result in rise in PICU admissions. But friends, I have an important concern on the contrary, concern for overdiagnosis of MISC and unwarranted usage of steroids because steroids do come with their own complications. Now the fourth zero survey which was conducted by the ICMR in India has clearly shown that more than two, two thirds of Indians have been exposed to COVID in the previous wave and are going to be antibody positive. In fact, this zero survey also said that more than 50% of children belonging to six to 17 years of age group are antibody positive. Now, this is very important because if you perform an antibody test these days, every child or I would say every alternate child will be antibody positive and will not have any diagnostic significance today. So previously, if you have heard my talks, I would say fever, high, COVID antibodies positive, high CRP and D-dimers. If you have clinical symptoms, we called it MISC. Now, if it is fever, COVID antibody positive, a high CRP and D-dimer, it could be anything, enteric fever, dengue fever. We have had cases who were said to have MISC and then went on to get diagnosed with pyelonephritis, acute leukemia, and what not. So it is important to understand that fever with COVID antibody today can mean anything under the sun. Now this two-year-old girl who had fever, some rashes, high CRPs, COVID antibody was tested and was positive, and she was said to have MISC, started on IVAG and steroids. Now as steroids were tapered, she had recurrence of fever after 20 days and CRP, which had in fact improved and there was a further rise in CRP now. So the question was, the referring pediatrician asked, is this ongoing MISC? Is this a relapse of MISC? The rashes here were evanescent. That means this child had rashes only during the fever episodes, which you do not see in MISC. Bone marrow examination was asked for, which was normal and this girl was diagnosed to have a form of juvenile idiopathic arthritis, which is systemic JIA. So duration of illness in MISC is very important. It is typically two weeks and never more than three weeks. So if any child 
goes on to have ongoing fevers for more than two to three weeks, it is not MISC. A nine-year-old boy, high-grade fever for three weeks, no rashes, no pain abdomen, no myocarditis, high CRPs, positive COVID antibody, again said to have MISC, given IVAG and steroids. As you can see, this is not MISC because this boy had only fever and nothing but fever. And this was actually a case of PEO on detailed investigations. He was diagnosed to have a lymphoma and the COVID antibody positivity just confused the case. This 12-year-old girl, fever for 10 days, high-grade in nature with leukopenia, thrombocytopenia, COVID antibody, very high titers, said to have MISC, again being advised IV agent steroids. This girl did not have rash, no redness of eyes, which is so characteristic of MISC, no myocarditis, no shock. This is not MISC. And when a blood culture was done, there was salmonella paratype. This is paratypoid fever, a real case. So when are we justified giving steroids or IVIG for a suspect MISC? Only and only if there are cardinal features. And what do I mean by that? If a child presents to you with fever, rashes, conjunctival injection, a high CRP, you don't have a better diagnosis. And this looks like Kawasaki disease. Yes, we are justified in giving IVIG. If children, especially adolescents, come to us with high-grade fever, with such kind of conjunctival injection, periorbital puffiness, as you can see, redness of eyes that you can see in both these children, redness of lips, and a diffuse rash, which is kind of fixed, and they have elevated inflammatory parameters, in this setting, maybe there could be a justification. Especially if these children who have fever, conjunctival injection, rash, and have myocarditis, or have coronary changes on echocardiogram, or they present with cardiogenic shock, yes, I think we have a reason to treat with IVAG and steroids. The lab features are very cardinal here. There is remarkable elevation of CRP, often above 100, I would say. Lymphopenia is a characteristic feature. So when you see lymphocytosis, think twice before you give steroids. There is no value of COVID antibody in the current setting. Please do not look at antibody titers. People call me and say the antibody titers are very high. What should I do? It does not mean anything. The titers do not mean anything. The third wave is ongoing and, the, and children are likely to get infected in this wave. A few of them may in fact develop MISC. But the onus is on us, us the pediatricians of the country, not to overtreat and neither to miss. Clinical judgment with sensible usage of the available tests is of paramount importance. So is there a hope? Can we prevent MISC? So let's vaccinate our kids. Right now, vaccination has been started for children between 15 to 18. I'm hopeful it will start for even younger children. And there are some recent reports emerging from US. This is one study recently published, which shows that they conducted studies in 24 hospitals across 20 states in US and showed that vaccination to a certain degree protects against MISC. This is a preliminary data. We need more studies. But at this moment, what I can say, the only way is to prevent COVID infection and to protect ourselves by vaccinating. And let us not overtreat with steroids. Thank you for watching. Take care. Stay safe.